think they're the holy grail of National Rail locomotives. The new locos will be a complete revolution to National Rail. The fuel efficiency of the locos, I think, will be a big factor in saving National Rail a lot of money. From a driver's standpoint, it's very enjoyable to drive. Well, these new locomotives will allow us to operate a train from Melbourne to Brisbane without refuelling and able to operate a train twice the length that we can currently operate. And for our customers, that's going to mean improved reliability and it means we're delivering better prices. Many years when our forefathers created the rail system, uh, they decided independently and without uh, consultation with one another to have different gauges. But what they also did, uh, probably not so familiar, is that they created different rolling stock and different axle loads. So one had no alternative but to almost start from scratch. Up to now, we've been utilising, if you like, inherited resources from the rail authorities, which have been less than efficient. 70% of our reliability problems have been related to locos. Purchasing 120 locomotives was the largest locomotive order ever placed in Australia. We had to de define and produce a specification which would allow it to run in Australia throughout the various rail systems uh, from the west coast right through to the east coast and up north into Queensland. National Rail's business dictated that the locomotives were delivered as quickly as possible because of the urgent need for power. So the, uh, the time frame was, uh, was extremely short. Ganinan's tender was the most favourable in terms of price. Their technical proposals were also highly satisfactory. Shifts just seem to be um, a lot quicker now and a lot more comfortable. New engines, more power and greater reliability. Without reliability, the um, customers are suffering and um, we need a reliable service or you lose your customers. If you lose your customers, you lose your job. The formation of the cab community is, uh, was done by the delegates or the drivers in each depot right across Australia. There were some mock-ups made, a, a timber one that was made and uh, we cut and pasted that many times and took the hacksaw to it on quite a few occasions, or I should say a chainsaw. To a point of where we were happy with it, with the gang of four, we then positioned it on a uh, container flat and uh, it basically done the tour of duty of Australia where it went to every depot in Australia. To fit National Rail's business, the general, this is a general purpose locomotive. It's uh, been designed to stretch all the limits to, its, to their maximum. The, uh, the locomotive is as long and as wide and as high as we could possibly fit in the envelope. We didn't have time for a prototype, so we've had to accept the debugging and infancy problem solving during our initial operations. Traditional things have gone back in years gone by where mostly there have always been a side control with the gauges and everything to the side. Too. In the early 80s we uh, went to desktop controls, uh, which were quite good, but at the same time they really gave us a problem with our leg room. We thought we've got to step outside the, the lateral thinking and, and what can we do? A lot of the consideration in the design of the Loco cabin has been about enabling our drivers to have the right systems, the right technology to enable them to do that job better. Yeah, the layout's good. I mean, we, uh, you don't have to reach. Everything's within reach. It's good. It's comfortable. About 50% of the value is GE components imported directly from the US. That's the engine alternator and other elements of the powertrain and control system. But it is an Australian loco from the point of view of its performance, specification and, uh, and the actual manufacture of the locomotive itself. This project has employed about 2,000 people all around Australia. The two main um, production lines have been in Bassendine in Perth and in uh, Broadmeadows in Newcastle, each uh, plant producing 60 locomotives for a total of 120 locomotives. The pulling power of a locomotive depends on the adhesion between the wheel and the rail and the amount of power that can be transmitted. The new locomotives have about 50% more adhesion than locomotives uh, built 20 years ago. 
so they are more powerful while at the same time being more fuel efficient. Fuel wise and managed, we could save tens of millions of dollars in fuel. The GEs will be comfortable, modern, all computerised. It will be equipped with a communication system to communicate with six different train control systems. And all of these are required because of the very broad range of uh, telecommunication infrastructures that are required to cover the requirements of the contract. You can talk to control no matter where you are in the country. Hit the select new controller button or the main line local uh, frequency, a terminal frequency if there's any applicable and two phone lines there. Uh, in all there are eight antennas that have to be located on the uh, roof of the locomotive at various points on the locomotive. This is the one piece you, you use for all communication, whether it's train control, local radio transmissions, terminal, uh, telephone calls, all go through the one line. So there's three radio positions. There's the, the drivers for going uh, forward, the co-drivers for going forward. There's also uh, a driver screwing for long in moves. The co-driver can concentrate more on the communications, which leaves the driver uh, less distracted. He can just do the job of driving. The noise on a locomotive brings fatigue. Now, if we can break down the noise barrier, there is less fatigue and consequently a better quality of life and a better ship. Yeah, it's a lot quieter up here. You can talk to one another a lot easier. You don't have to yell. And it's easy to have a conversation, which helps a lot. So in all the long hauls we do, the, the more comfort we get, the better off we are, I suppose. The Vigilance is a, uh, an updated version. Uh, basically, it's, it only comes into use if, if we don't operate any of the controls for a period of time. Is that loud enough for you? One of the unique features of this loco is that we have two driving positions. There's a short end which is equipped uh, both for single and two man working. The, all, the loco also can be propelled long end from a, from a different driving position. This is specifically required for uh, shunting and short, uh, short haul tasks. It's uh, yeah, the vision going long end is always uh, not as good as going short end, but it's pretty good compared with other locos I've been on where we drive long end first. new equipment going into sidings, placing people's loading on time in National Rail delivery. It means that they can readily identify with the, the organisation that we are. They're going to be ours, maintained by National Rail um, contractors. Gidinans has got the obligation you know, of using Spotswood as a base to supply out of the 120 NR-class locos, 113 every day, 24 hours of the day. The locomotive collects data about itself and the way it's operating. This produces a whole range of control systems that ensure that the locomotive operates efficiently. The Ganinans help desk will be able to understand everything that's going on with the loco via the communications he has with that loco. So it's no longer the handball out to, to the rail operator. They now have to stand by their product all the way and cop the ups and downs of performance with the operator. It's not like they're in the door for 15 years and, and they're locked in there. National Rail requires them to perform. If they don't perform, National Rail can say goodbye and look for someone else. With the, uh, the variable power and, uh, and things like that, we can control the engine to the, the needs of the train rather than just to be constantly wasting power that doesn't need to be wasted. These new locos mean that we'll be able to put two where previously we've had say three or four locos on our services, which means we're providing the right level of power to do the job, but with far less resources and actual capital and, uh, and locos involved. Here is your, uh, your speed set in a uh, bar graph format. That's telling you you're accelerating and basically tell you what speed you'll be doing in a minute if things stay the same as they are now. They're excellent, excellent. A lot easier on the eye. You don't get the glow, you can always see what you want to know. The information's always there when you need it. National Rail has placed a lot of emphasis on having the drivers involved. I feel that this is quite unique in the, uh, in the history of Australian railways and I think we've finished up with a darn good loco because of it.
National Rail will be in a very strong position in the marketplace in relation to its ability to haul freight. And most importantly, a great step along the way to Australia's first profitable interstate rail business.